Golden State Media Concepts bring you Book Review Podcast, a haven for bookworms of all ages and the widest genres, from mystery to memoirs, romance to comedy, fantasy to sci-fi. If you love to read, this is the podcast for you. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. And welcome to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am your host, Sarah, and this week we have another fabulous author to interview. This time I am interviewing author K.D. Proctor about her book, Meet Me Under the Stars. This book is a lot of fun, and it had a special meaning for me as I was reading through it because all of the main characters in it worked at a summer camp. And so there's all of these references to camp and things that actually are kind of universal to camps all over the place. I worked at a summer camp in Montana for two summers. And there were times when I was reading the book when I when I would laugh out loud and, and be like, oh my gosh, I completely forgot about that. This is a uh, camp in Colorado. It has, you know, it's nothing to do with the camp that I worked out. And yet there are some traditions that just made me laugh and brought back memories and so for me, that was a really special part of this book. But it's also a good book um, in terms of romance and friendship and uh, figuring out w what's important in your life. And a lot of those things that just happen when we're in our early 20s as we're working our way through the things that life throws at us and the relationships that we're involved in and how those relationships evolve and change over time. So let me read to you from the back of the book. This is Meet Me Under the Stars by Katie Proctor. When ratings for her popular do-it-yourself TV show start to circle the drain after the sudden death of her sister, Charlotte Charlie Conti has only one mission, to plan a comeback. But her sister had other plans. As part of the will, Charlie must work with him to create a memorial scholarship in her sister's memory. The same him Charlie fell in love with three years ago while working at a summer camp. The same him she dumped to protect his heart. Sexy British player Nate Walsh has 60 days to find a new job or he'll be deported back to England, where he's no longer welcome. He doesn't have time to work on a memorial scholarship with her. The same her who shattered his heart without explanation or warning. The same her he's never gotten over. Unable to agree on a benefactor for the scholarship, Nate and Charlie challenge each other to a winner-takes-all competition. They both know the only way to win is to turn up the heat and tease one another with the one thing they both want, each other. But as sparks fly, their true feelings resurface. Nate and Charlie must decide if their love is worth the effort, or if they'll allow their disastrous past mistakes to destroy their chance at forever. So at the heart, it is a romance. It is about these two characters who are brought back together because of Charlie's sister's will. And they you know, they have to figure out what their feelings for each other actually are. They spend a lot of time kind of using those feelings against each other in terms of this competition that they're having, but they do have to figure out what they want out of life and what they want out of each other and that relationship that they once had that has now, of course, changed. But there's also the the aspect of dealing with her sister's death, dealing with um, Charlie's father, who she really hasn't spoken to much since her sister's death. Her mother also died uh, not long before the, her sister Gwen died. So she's trying to figure out and navigate her relationship with her father. And then there's these three friends that also worked at camp, one of whom is Gwen's boyfriend, that are brought in to be on the board as they figure out setting up this memorial scholarship fund for the camp that they all worked out. So again, it's that coming of age story. It's the those defining relationships that we have and how they change as we get, go through life, as things in our own lives change, as our friends change, as our family dynamics change, and figuring out how we navigate those relationships. It's a really fun read. I know it's kind of a heavy topic, and we actually talk about that a little bit in the interview in terms of Gwen's death, but that's the catalyst that then launches this relationship navigation throughout the book and it's it's heartwarming it's funny and it's a really good read especially if you were a counselor at a summer camp you got to pick this up so that is my take on meet me under the stars 
by Katie Proctor. But as I always say, enough out of me. Let's actually talk to the author and hear what she has to say about this wonderful book. Hi, Kelly. Thank you so much for joining me. It's wonderful to have you on the podcast. How are you? Uh, I am well. Thank you for having me. I'm so honored to be here. Well, I'm so excited to talk to you about your new book, Meet Me Under the Stars. Before we talk about the book, though, I would love for uh, my listeners just to get to know you a little bit. So if you want to share whatever you're comfortable sharing about yourself and your life. Yeah, sure. Sure. Um, Katie Proctor is my pen name, but I just, I ask folks to call me Kelly. So the K in Katie stands for Kelly. So makes it a lot easier. And I'm still getting used to the pen name as well. So people have said, oh, thanks, Katie. And I'm like, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> so I'm still getting used to the pen name piece. But um, I live in a rural small town in West Central Minnesota. Um, and I'm surrounded by farms. And because we're Minnesota, we're also the land of 10,000 lakes, lots of lakes around here too. So it's a, it's a great little area to, to be in. And uh, by day, I work at a community college as a project coordinator doing all kinds of cool stuff. And by night, I'm a wife. I'm also a pet parent. We don't have any children, but we have fur kids. And uh, I also am now an author. So um, in spare time other than authoring, I can't think, I think, gosh, what else do I do? I think that's pretty much it. You know, <laughs> like I think well, right now, it's probably enough. <laughs> my spare time. Yeah. Right? So, yeah. But yeah. So well, great. Thank you very much for that. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about your book. It's your debut novel, right? Yes, that's correct. Okay, it's and it's called Meet novel. Me Under the Stars. So tell us a little yes. bit about the story. Sure. So Meet Me Under the Stars is a contemporary romance. And the story itself centers around the characters of Nate and Charlie, um, which is actually a nickname for Charlotte. And the couple, they're a former couple. So this is a second chance romance, which means that they dated once before and are now coming back together. And more than anything, what they want to do is they want to fulfill the last will and testament of Charlie's sister who has passed away from a hereditary condition. And they realize though, that the feelings that they had for each other have never really gone away like they thought. So, right. <laughs> so they tend to resurface. And, you know, so that's sort of the, the real quick kind of down and dirty about the book. But specifically, that isn't um, doesn't give you any spoilers. But specifically, you know, Charlie's sister, Gwen, really hated the idea that Charlie and Nate ended. And so when she kind of saw the writing on the wall with this hereditary condition that she wanted to make sure her affairs were in order, and she wrote this will she meddled beyond the grave to get them back together. And the catalyst that brings them back together is she asks them to create a memorial scholarship in her name. And that memorial scholarship is for the summer camp that Gwen and Charlie attended when they were children. And it's also the same summer camp that Gwen and Charlie worked at as adults when they were in college. And it's also the same place where Charlie met Nate. And so because this scholarship revolves around camp, they have to go back to camp. And so all of the feelings kind of come back and all of the shenanigans and all kinds of angsty, twisty stuff <laughs> yes. tends to happen while they're there. So Yes. Um, and Nate yeah. and Charlie are very competitive. So they, oh. <laughs> in, in addition to trying yes. to figure out their feelings toward one another, they have this whole competitive streak going on. And I kept having to remind myself that they are, they're fairly young in the book in their yes. um, early 20s, yes. because there were moments when I wanted to kind of reach to the pages and be like, come on. Yes. Yep. And I did that on purpose, too. And I've had a lot of people who commented on that. They're like, there are times where I wanted to just smack them <laughs> so much. And I'm like, I know. And that's the best part. Yes. The fact that you just wanted to say, like, come on, get this together. They are young. They're they're 20. I, I think I put them like 23, 24 ish in age. And so they do make dumb mistakes and they, you know, they are more focused on themselves and not really kind of seeing the writing on the wall and not accepting that this is okay to have feelings for one another. And they, you know, but they do, and, and they do make some choices that make us all sort of just say, Oh my God, what are you doing? But <laughs> right, right. And then I think back adds, to when I was 23 and go, okay, I can, yeah. I can relax a little bit. 
Yes. And I think about that too. And I think, you know, when I was 23, I probably made those same mistakes, if not more Mm -hmm. (laughs) when I was their age. So, so yeah, it is. And that's what adds to that angsty, twisty kind of, kind of feeling um, because of their shenanigans. Yes. But it also adds to the humor in the book and, um, you know, it adds a level of fun because they are fulfilling the last will and testament, which is a pretty heavy topic. So it kind of lightens things up a little bit. Yeah, I agree with that too. I think, you know, when I've, when I've shared that with people and you talk about a will and, you know, fulfilling that last wish, if you kind of want to think of it that way, people instantly go, oh, and they sort of, you know, right. have this, oh, oh gosh, that sounds like a heavy book. And I'm like, oh God, no, it is not. It is, it's actually, yeah, there's some heavy stuff there, but it's not. So are there um, autobiographical elements in either the book or the characters? Yeah. So, you know, I was thinking about this and my answer to that is sort of yes and no. So to give a little bit of background, you know, when I was in college, um, my summer job was to work at a summer camp. And as much as my, I remember coming home my freshman year and looking for that summer job and telling my mom, I'm going to go work at a Girl Scout camp. And she's like, what? (laughs) (laughs) And she's like, but I was hoping maybe you'd work at a job that would make some money. Some money, yeah. 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 And you're like, well, you don't make money working at camp. You go more for the experience than the money piece, as you learn very quickly. Um, But at the same time, you know, I did that for a couple of summers. And then I wanted a bit of a change. And I ended up at a privately owned summer camp in northern Minnesota called Camp Lincoln and Camp Lake Hubert. And that in itself was a turning point for me because in 2002 when graduate school was done and life just kind of brought me back home again I ended up working full-time for Camp Lincoln and Camp Lake Hubert so between college days and full-time days I've got 11 years of camp summers that kind of played a part in this so when it comes to the setting of camp, absolutely, 100% in my head, it was Camp Lincoln and Camp Lake Hubert, kind mm-hmm. of a hybrid. And these two camps are on a lake across from one another. So if you think of like the parent trap, nice. the movie, the parent trap, it's very much like that. So, um, and, you know, so when I think about that, I think of all the kind of things that kind of played a part. So in the book, there are times like um, where, at breakfast one morning, Charlie looks up and everybody has their finger on their nose and she realizes that she has to scrape the plates at the end of the meal. That nose game is exactly what we do at every single meal to determine who has to scrape the plates. And that is um, not uncommon to camp because I worked at camp in Montana <laughs> and we had to do the same thing. Yes, and so, so it's that kind of thing where those kinds of little Easter eggs got put into the book to, um, you know, the... The no scraping was one of those, the bar where they um, have the little dart competition, Um, you know, Nate and Charlie being competitive, trying one up one another in a dart game. And um, that bar is a play on the bar in the town um, near camp. And, you know, so it's that kind of piece that gets kind of pulled into it too. Um, You know, the ringing of the camp bell in the morning and not allowed to write on the camp walls in the cabin. You know, there are times where Charlie is kind of looking around different buildings in camp and some of the storage buildings, she finds little things scribbled by her sister on the walls. That's totally okay at camp to write in the activity sheds, but not on the cabin walls. Right. Um, you know, the, um, the acronym CFAB, C-F-A-B, the Camp Friends Are Best, that is 100% pulled from Camp Lincoln and Camp Lake Hubert because that's what we talk about as far as camp friendships. So those things are absolutely true. But when it comes to the characters themselves, no, none of the characters are actually based on any of my friends or myself, um, anyone that I know. However, there are certain characteristics that absolutely I have stolen from my friends and right. <laughs> have put into people, but nothing where when they read the book and they say, oh, that's so-and-so, or, oh, I know who that is. Like, none of that is will ever be something that they would be able to pick out, but they can easily say, oh, yeah, I can kind of see a little bit of so-and-so in that person. Well, yeah, same with this person too. So when it comes to the autobiographical stuff, I would say a yes and no more for the setting rather than the characters themselves. Okay, thank you. 
Pardon me as I do my normal interrupting. We do have to take our first break of the podcast, but stay tuned for more of my interview with author Katie Proctor about her book, Meet Me Under the Stars. Always on the go, but the day just won't be one without your Hollywood fix. Let Golden State Media Concepts Entertainment Podcast take care of that. Jordan and Keith is Entertainment Tonight meets Access Hollywood. I'm Jordan. The guy laughing, that's Keith. (laughs) Yeah, I'm Keith. An all-inclusive look of pop culture. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. I am speaking with author Katie Proctor about her new novel, Meet Me Under the Stars, which does take place, or yeah, it does take place partially at a summer camp about characters who worked at that summer camp. And now we are going to hear from uh, Kelly about some of her favorite camp stories. So in terms yeah. of camp, because uh, camp itself is almost uh, another character in the book. Um, yes. What are your favorite camp stories from your own life <laughs> that you can like share? How much, <laughs> how much time do you have? <laughs> there are so many. Uh, <laughs> there are so many. Some that would probably get me really in trouble if I ever told them. Yeah. Um, oh, yeah. But at the same time, you know, there's – I can think of one funny one that I'll share with you. But, you know, besides that one many funny stories, you know, the one thing I absolutely love about camp is that the person who walks through the gate on day one – is not the same person who walks through the gate on the way out at the Mm. end of their season. Mm -hmm. Totally different person, whether it's a camper, a staff member, it doesn't matter. Like you come in and camp has that way of making you a better person when you leave, whether you're more confident, whether you have tried something new, um, maybe just a reaffirmation that it's okay to be who I am. Like camp is that place where you can be yourself 100% of the time. You can take risks 100% of the time and no one ever makes you feel bad for the risks that you're taking. Mm -hmm. And I think that's probably some of the cool stuff that I really love about camp. But I was thinking about some camp stories and fun things that to share and the one and I asked some of my camp friends, I said, all right, I, what do you think that I should share as far as a fun story? And they all said, they said, you have to tell the story about Poe the Point Set a Plant. And, and so I'm like, okay, I will tell the Poe Point Set a Plant story. So when I worked full time in the camp office for Camp Lincoln and Camp Lake Hubert, in the wintertime, we focused on enrolling campers into camp. And so getting camp, hiring staff, that kind of stuff. And right after the holidays, we hired my friend Jake. And Jake was going to be our marketing person. He was fresh right out of college, had that total go-getter attitude. He was a perfect addition to the full-time camp staff. And he had worked at camp um, in the summer as well. So he knew camp in and out. And he shows up on the first day and he's getting the tour of the office. And Bill, who is one of the camp directors, says, now, Jake, You know, one of the things you're going to be responsible for is taking care of this plant. And he points to this, like, already dead poinsettia plant. Like, it had, oh, yeah, it had, like, maybe two leaves that were still alive, and the rest were, like, all brown and crispy in the pot, right? And Jake being Jake, wanting to make a good impression, he's like, I'm on it. So he starts to take care of this thing, and our office spaces were right next to one another. But I had the only window And so Jake was using my window to put the plant and he would talk to it every day and he would water it and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, what are you doing? And he's like, I'm going to impress Bill Jones. (laughs) He's been the camp director forever, right? He's like, this is my way to impress Bill. I'm going to bring this plant back. I'm like, dude, really? You could think of a hundred other ways to impress Bill this plant ain't it. And he's like, nope, nope, I'm doing it. So he would spend all of this time working on this plant. And finally, one day I told him, I'm like, if this thing lives, I will eat my socks. Oh, no. He was like, really? And I was like, dude, you are not going to bring this plant back. So sure enough, he starts really like trimming it back and doing all, pruning it, going to town on this thing. And the thing started to come back to life. And I started to panic because <laughs> I'm like, you cannot make a comment like that about I'll eat my socks at camp because they will see to it that you do 
Mm -hmm. your socks and I'm like oh my god they're going to come back they are going to get me (laughs) and all I could think about was sitting in the dining hall and Jake coming to me saying so how would you like your socks do you want a barbecue (laughs) like what would you like and I'm like he is oh my god he's going to do this to me I know it and so this plant really started to come back Jake was giving me more crap about the fact that I made this statement about eating my socks so I killed it (laughs) I killed that plant (laughs) oh so I was like I am not eating my socks in a dining hall I'm not and so poor little plant into the I went oh yeah so I went into our little kitchenette in our office and I found every chemical that I could find under the sink and every proactive measure that Jake took on that poinsettia plant I had a countermeasure so if he stuck a little miracle grow stick in it I doubt it was goo gone (sighs) if he like went to water it I would add some bleach like I I did not hold back. I'm like, I am not eating my socks in the dining (laughs) hall. So this poor plant finally croaks, right? And Jake is beside himself that this plant croaks. And then, of course, I feel bad, right? The Minnesota Lutheran guilt totally eats me up. I'm like, oh, my God, I told, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. And so I snuck into the camp director's office. And our camp director, his name is Ruggs. And Laura, who was the girls' camp director at the time, they were both having a meeting and I said, I have to talk to you. And they were like, why? What's up? And I shut the door and I said, I killed the plant. <laughs> and they're like, what? And I said, I killed the plant, not Jake. And they couldn't stop laughing. And they said, oh, this is too good. This is way too good. They're like, you can't tell him. Oh, no. You can't tell him that you killed the plant. I'm like, what do you mean I can't tell him? Like the guilt is just eating me alive. And he's, they're like, no, no, you can't tell him. You can't tell him. So... <laughs> So fast forward, we have a funeral for the plant. Like, do you talk about like not having enough to do in the camp office? Like, we had a funeral. We wrote an obituary. Like, you know, the whole shebang, right? And (laughs) so this plant is dead, and this thing is still eating me up inside. This was probably late March by the time this all kind of came to a head, and then the plant was no longer. And um, so it gets to be probably early April and we don't go to camp until the end of May. So I'm supposed to sit on this until the end of May. And I'm like, this is not going to happen. I know it. I'm going to slip. And I did. We were at Jake's apartment with some friends that were traveling the U S who were international staff members. And they were traveling before coming to camp in the summer. And so we're all hanging out at Jake's apartment and, Jake and I are the best of friends, but we also fight like siblings. So we nitpick at one another and just kind of poke fun and whatever. And we were just ribbing each other so hard over who knows what. I don't even remember. And in just not wanting to take it anymore, I finally looked at him and I said, oh, yeah? Well, I'm the one who killed that damn point on a plant. And he was like, what? (laughs) (laughs) So mad at me. He was so mad at me. He didn't talk to me for three days. Mm. He was so mad that I killed that plant. And so that has been sort of the one thing that is just a funny between Jake and I, like everybody knows that story. Everybody knows that I killed that plant. And even to this day, after all these years later, every Christmas, I send Jake a point set of plants. (laughs) to his house and and he's always like I it's it's a good thing that you're not here because this one and he and he keeps him alive for for a decent amount of time but yeah it's been sort of that funny story between us that you don't ever drop a challenge like that and then think Mm -mm. oh you gotta think before you do that before you're at camp yeah you gotta say something that you're actually willing to do Yes, otherwise it will come back and get you. So, but yeah, I did. I killed Jake's poinsettia plant. And he didn't make you eat your socks in retribution? He did not make me, he did not make me eat my socks in retribution. Though one of these days, maybe he's saving that. He might be. One of these days, we might be getting together and he might be making me eat some socks. (laughs) You're you're just lucky that when you send him the the poinsettia every Christmas, he doesn't send you a pair of socks every Christmas. I know, right? (laughs) So maybe I maybe we could work that out because I would really I could really use some good wool socks. <laughs> so maybe maybe Jake can can do that. We can have a little exchange, and you know we'll see where we can go with that. But yeah. So and you know we we do that kind of stuff all the time. Like it's not just in the winter office at camp. There's lots of practical jokes. There's all kinds of fun stuff like that. And I think that's also what makes the summer go by so quickly is when you can have fun like that when no one gets hurt. No one, you know, 
technically we like to say no one gets hurt and nobody's stuff gets damaged. Well, mm-hmm. the plant is the exception on that one. But but at the same time, like if you can have fun with that, I think that that just makes the whole camaraderie of camp just so much fun. Thank you. That was <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. That was, that was traumatizing for the poor plant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> in terms of writing, have you always wanted to write? Is it something that you've always done, or did you start at a specific time in your life? Yeah, that's a great question. So, you know, I remember, I think probably, you know, junior high school, kind of dabbling with some creative stories and what have you. And when I was in college, I was an English major. So I had to take a lot of writing courses, but none of that was ever like this big dream of wanting to be an author. Like it just, some of that creative writing happened, but it never, I never saw it going anywhere. Um, And so how this kind of came about for me was I was actually at a work meeting and we were talking about um, some different online uh, platforms and someone had asked about Wattpad and that their faculty at their college, particularly in the English department, were using Wattpad. And I was like, what's Wattpad? And everybody's like, I have no idea. So over lunch, we were kind of Googling what Wattpad was. And as I looked at, this was like 2000. 13, 2014. And so when I looked at it, I was like, you're kidding me. Like people write stories and then put them out here. Like, that's so cool. And at the time when I looked at Wattpad, it was more kind of in the YA, the young adult kind of genre. Um, Lots of younger authors putting things out there, but still a great place to be able to express your creativity through writing. And it wasn't just, um, you know, novels. It was poetry. It was song lyrics. There was a lot of fan fiction, um, a lot of fan fiction around One Direction, by the way. <laughs> so yeah. lots of different, yeah, yeah, you know, lots of different really cool things, but I'm like, this is really kind of neat. And then I started to think about what I would write. And then the summer of 2014, I got this idea for a um, sort of a suspenseful um plot around medical students going to Africa for like a Doctors Without Borders kind of thing. And it took off. Granted, that manuscript is in a folder and will probably never be seen again. But at the same time, it really did sort of spark that interest to sit down and do it. Um, And that is really kind of what started it. And then as people read that and gave me feedback on it, I started to see that actually writing romance was more what I was leaning towards. And that manuscript was kind of leading more romantic than more suspenseful. And so that was sort of the writing on the wall too, of maybe that's where I need to be, you know, focusing my energy in the writing piece. And that's how it ended up that I started to really realize that writing romance was what I really like to do instead. So, yeah. um, but that's, that's how it came to be. So it's not something I've always wanted to do. It just, Kind of happened. Yeah. Um, in sort of a very weird kind of roundabout way. <laughs> that is a very, you know, just Googling something that you'd never heard of before. Yeah. That's great. Yeah, absolutely. So you work full time. So writing is, um, you know, it's not your full time job. How do you balance that? How do you have a certain schedule that you keep? Do you have a favorite place to write? What does that look like for you? Yeah, sure. So, you know, um, my favorite place to write is actually anywhere where my husband is not. (laughs) Um, And so I know that sounds like, uh, like, I don't love my husband. I love him dearly. And he is probably my biggest champion when it comes to the writing. Um, But, you know, in our evenings, when we have our downtime, like he likes to watch TV, and he likes to kind of surf the iPad and and whatnot. And so the noise is just a little too much for me. So usually he's down in the family room and I'm usually either in our bedroom or in our living room, just sort of away from the noise as much as I can get. Um, But, you know, otherwise it's just um, as far as a schedule goes, I really don't have a schedule um, unless I'm on a deadline uh, with editing or what have you. But um, for me, I have found that I have to, I write when it feels right. (laughs) I write when it feels right. Um, I think a lot of people try and force the writing every day. And for some people that works, for me, it doesn't. And so I find that if I force myself to write when I'm not ready, what I produce is utter junk. Mm. And so it's just, you know, I think for some folks, they look at that as a way just to sort of keep the wheels moving and to keep, you know, 
your skills in check. But for me, I find it to be like I've just wasted a whole bunch of time um, if the end result is not something that I can use. And so um, I am okay with taking time away from writing. I'm okay if I don't write every day. I'm okay if, if I go weeks without writing because I know it'll still be there. I know that it's not going to go away. One more interruption from the Rude Show host who keeps popping in to interrupt the interview with uh, commercials. But we do have to take our second break of the podcast. And when we come back, Kelly will be talking about her advice for aspiring writers. So stay tuned to the GSMC Book Review Podcast. Tired of searching the vast jungle of podcasts? Now listen close and hear this out. There's a podcast network that covers just about everything that you've been searching. The Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network is here. Nothing less than a podcast bliss with endless hours of podcast coverage. From news, sports, music, fashion, cooking, entertainment, fantasy, football, and so much more. So stop lurking around and go straight out to the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. Guaranteed to fill that podcast itch. Whatever it may be, visit us at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook and Twitter and download us on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Welcome back to the GSMC Book Review Podcast and the conclusion of my interview with author Katie Proctor. So what type of advice would you give to someone who is aspiring to be an author? Yeah, you know, um, I jotted down a couple of things that I thought would be, that I wish people would have told me when I first started out. So um, the first one is don't let anyone make you feel bad for the genre that you write or the path to publication. I think a lot of people will look at a genre and romance is probably the one that gets depicted on the most as sort of the, oh, you took the easy way out. Oh, it's romance. Oh, mm -hmm. like they don't consider that like a true book. And it's like, well, it really is a true book. And I think it's, I think it might even be a harder genre to write than, <laughs> than anything else. But I, again, I haven't written other genres, so I don't have anything to go on for that. But it's hard to write a book. So don't let anyone take that away from you. And, you know, for publication, like if you want to get an agent and shoot for a top five publisher, go for it. If you want to self-publish, go for it. You know, that choose what is best for you. And then, you know, in that same vein, if you do choose to self-publish, get an editor and get a good cover artist. I don't care what you write. I don't care if it's a self-help book, a fiction novel, a memoir. It doesn't matter. Spend the time and the money to get an editor and a good cover artist. Mm -hmm. um, and particularly an editor that is not someone you know. And I think when you find, when you ask somebody that you know to be your editor, what ends up happening is that person oftentimes doesn't give you the true feedback that you need in order to grow and to make your product better. Right. And so I think you really need to get outside of that, that comfort circle and push yourself out of that. Um, you know, I would also say don't shortcut, don't write a genre or an age classification because you think it's easy or it's going to be a sure sell. Mm -hmm. You need to write what you feel in your gut. Um, not because you saw that, um, I think one of the examples that gets used a lot are like the vampire stories. You know, when Twilight came out, everybody wanted to write a vampire book. Right. So now everybody wrote these vampire books or dystopian. Like everybody wants to write dystopian books. Um, you know, if that's what you love, write it. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, don't look at it as the, oh, that's a sure ticket. I'm going to write that. Right. You know, follow your gut with that. Um, I would also say, too, that don't read reviews. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. my other advice. Don't read reviews. It's it's inevitable. I mean, you will see some of them. People will tag you in reviews. People will send reviews to you, um, whatever it might be. But at the same time, I have to remind myself that reviews are for other readers, not 
for me. Mm -hmm. My feedback comes from my critique partners and my beta readers. And, you know, that's where that comes from. At this point, I can't do anything to change it. I can't change the typo that you found, or I can't change the the indentation of, you know, whatever you found on what page. Right. That review is for other readers. Um, you know, and I would say then at the end of the day, you have to be proud of the work that you produce. And that's why I think not reading the reviews helps with that. If you're proud of the work that you have put out and you're proud of what is on the shelf, then the reviews aren't going to make a difference because you're really proud of the work that you've put forward. That's my, that's my advice to new. That's great. I really appreciate that. That's a very I, I, that's good. I liked it. Um, and I, in terms of your cover art, you did very well with choosing your cover artist because it's uh, it's beautiful. I, I love the I love the cover. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so good job. I, I I lucked out big time with that. Like my publisher, when it came to doing the cover art, I had probably ninety eight percent control over that cover. Nice and. I totally lucked out with that and every suggestion that I tossed back, they totally ran with it. And I know that not everyone gets that luxury to be able to have that. Um, you know, I've heard of people that they're like, I lost the battle. Mm -hmm. like, or I'm like, this is what I got. And, you know, and, but I am so fortunate that I have a publisher who was like, yeah, let's work on getting your cover the way you want it. And yeah, so yeah, I know. I love my cover too. That's awesome. <laughs> You're a writer, obviously. Are you a reader? Do you love, do you have favorite, I am. do you have favorite authors or genres? Oh gosh, yes. You know, I would say that genre wise, I don't, while I love romance, obviously, um, I just love a good book. So I don't care what genre it falls in. I just love a good book. And um, so I went back through my Kindle and my Nook to see what ones really jumped out at me. And um, you know, for kind of in the funny book kind of vein, there's a book out there called This Is Where I Leave You by Jonathan Troper. And it's a, it actually was made into a movie. Movie is hilarious as well. They did a nice job with the movie. Um, and it's a story about a man who dies and his last wish is that his kids come home and sit Shiva for seven days. Okay. And so, and these kids are like, but we're not really practicing Jews anymore. And the mother's like, I don't care. You will come home. For yeah. seven days and we will sit shiva well at and least so they're jews all, i mean i was gonna ask are yeah. they jewish <laughs> yeah they are they are and so the um the and it's so it's all the family dynamic and all of just the craziness of being under the same roof again with you know their kids and the and their and their spouses and all of that kind of stuff so oh, it's such a great book um you know as far as romance stuff goes anything and everything by colleen hoover love 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 her books um, I would also say, too, that the Ivy League series by Serena Bowen is a great uh, romance series. It's around a hockey team at an Ivy League college, but it's not really hockey based. Like a lot of the hockey novels tend to be all about hockey and, the, you know, the players and all that kind of stuff. This one's more about their backstories, which is really kind of a neat spin on that. Um, I would also say the Laguna series by Claire Marty is really good. Um, fun second chance romance and it's adult um in the in the uh, age classification of that too um women's fiction i would uh lean towards the wild women's guide to traveling the world by Kristen rockway uh, which i know you've also talked with Kristen as well and um love her story yes. love 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 that book um the blessing series by beverly jenkins is also another one of my favorite beverly jenkins is actually a romance author she writes historical black romance and this tends to lean more into the women's fiction category. Um, it's about a woman who um, won a, in her divorce settlement, half of her husband's millionaire, millions. So she's a millionaire by divorce and she finds a town for sale on eBay and buys it. Oh, wow. And then, go, and then goes into rebuilding this town. And it is such a great book. Um, and it's a series. So then she's picked different characters and have given them their own books, too. Um, let's see. What else do I have on my list? I've got the Reality Star series by Laura Heffernan. So that follows a woman who goes on to a reality show. And That's then, awesome. Um, the she's going to be on the show in a, in, a, in a couple weeks. Oh, yes. You will love her. She is fantastic. Yay. Um, and her books are awesome, too. So um, 
I've got a little sneak peek into books two and three. Oh, sneaky. Published. So, <laughs> I know, there, so those are really good too. Um, and then Jessica Strother, um, her book Almost Missed You is a fantastic women's fiction, kind of suspenseful, um, great book club read. Definitely, definitely a great, great book. Um, and then in the mystery vein, what's funny is the very first mystery that I have ever read is Hollywood Homicide by Kelly Garrett. And I had never read a mystery before until well, that Kelly's was book came excellent out. Excellent so, choice. <laughs> I know. I thought so too. So, but those are some of the books that I've really enjoyed over, um, over time. My to be read list has grown so oh, big. I hear you. That I really, ha- I, I'm starting to finally kind of chip away at it, but yeah, there's so many, so many great books out there. So yes, many. there are there. Uh, yeah. And, um, I always say this when I'm talking on this show is that I just, my list keeps getting longer and longer of the things that, I know, right? you know, cause I keep meeting great <laughs> authors and you all have such wonderful books. And then I ask you what you're reading and then my, that list just grows. So. Yes. Same for me too. Like I think of that as well. And I see people who recommend books. I'm like, Oh yeah, I need to add that. And then I look at my TBR list on Goodreads. And I'm like, dang. Yeah, I'm, uh, that thing is never gonna get, I'm never going to whittle that down at all. No, so, I'm going to have to live to be at least 300 and I don't think I'll right. still. Yep. Yep. Yeah. In terms of um, social media, where can people find you? Yeah. So social media, I am on Facebook. Uh, You can search for me for KD Proctor. I have a fan page and then I have the the profile friend account. So if you want to friend me, you're more than welcome to do that too. Um, I'm on Twitter at KDP Writes. And then I'm also on Instagram, which is probably, I have to admit, probably my favorite social media. Um, I love, I just love surfing through pictures. I think I could probably do that all day. Um, And my Instagram is KD underscore Proctor. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Do you have a website? I do. I do. I keep forgetting about the website. That's also kdproctor.com. Okay, perfect. I'm a dot com. You're a dot <laughs> I'm a dot com. So. That's excellent. Oh, I didn't ask you what's next. I, I, I forgot oh. to ask you, are you working on anything oh, right now? Okay. I am. I am working on book two. Um, Melanie, who is a character in book one, is getting her own book. Oh, good. And so, yeah, so I've been kind of kicking around that plot for quite some time. And that kind of goes back to that whole idea of write when you're ready. Like, there have been times where I think, yep, yep, I'm good. And then I start doing it and it doesn't work. And then I had to come back and refocus again. And so, um, but yeah, I think I, I think I finally have that plot down to, to where I'm happy with it. So, um, I'm definitely a plotter to get everything mapped out. So um, hopefully, fingers crossed, that will get to my editor um, by the end of November. And if they accept it for publication, then hopefully we'll have something by next holiday season. Oh, good. That's fingers crossed. Hopefully, hopefully. So, um, yeah. Yeah, well, I look forward to that. As far as um, other things to kind of know, you know, I think the only thing that – I find really interesting about this is the number of people that have come up to me and have said, you know what, I'm not normally a romance reader, but I really liked your book. And I'm like, well, I appreciate you taking a risk yeah. and trying something new. And, and so, you know, I've had people who have read my book that have been 19 and I've had people who have been in their mid seventies who have read it and have all said the same thing. Like, I really like that. Um, you know, my aunt, put me in her prayer journal because of the uh you know the sexy times that are in there which really weren't all that sexy but no yeah she did she put me in her prayer journal um but then you know you ask my mother and my mother's like "Eh, you know I've read I've read others yeah I'm like all right you know so so you know as far as when people ask about romance and they ask about some of those intimate times in the book, I say, yes, there are, but you can easily skip those chapters and still come out on the other side with a good understanding of the story. So, um, but all in all, I had so much fun writing this book and I am so glad that I get to kind of showcase summer camp a little bit. I get to, um, you know, bring people into that world and, and that, that makes my heart happy. So oh, good. I'm happy with how things have gone. That's wonderful. Thank you so much. I yeah. really appreciate um, you taking the time to talk to me today. It's been so much fun. Oh, good. 
good. I have had a, I had a blast. So thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. <laughs> As always, I want to once again thank my guest, Katie Proctor, for talking to me today about her debut novel, Meet Me Under the Stars. It's a really fun read, as I already said. I highly encourage you to pick it up, and I'm looking forward to when the second book comes out, because we'll get to revisit this world and these characters, and I am interested to find out what happens to that particular character. So looking forward to that. I want to thank you, my listeners, for joining me for this interview, and I hope that you will join me again next week. I will be doing another author interview, this time historical fiction, and that is Megan Masterson's The Wardrobe Mistress. So I'm really looking forward to speaking to her about that book. It takes place in revolutionary France and is about, uh, in part, Marie Antoinette. So looking forward to speaking with Megan about that book. As always, you can find all of our podcasts at www.gsmcpodcast.com. You can download those podcasts on iTunes, SoundCloud, Google Play, Stitcher, any app that you find that you use for your mobile device. And you can follow us on social media, Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. I would love to hear from you. Thank you again for joining me. Please join me again next week for another author interview. In the meantime, go out there and get yourself lost in a good book. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Book Review Podcast. Part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.